hit HBO show has this as a supporting character. What does that tell you about the show? This season we visited 15 different breweries and drank dozens of different beers. What was my favorite? I'm gonna show you next. Ooh, the mystery. I'm Glenn Mack now. He's Joe Sixpack. We're at the Ship Bottom Beer Garden in Beach Haven, Long Beach Island. Season finale of What's Brewing. is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. And by Concha Hopkin Brewing Company, now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at ConchiExpress.com. Welcome to What's Brewing, along with Joe Sixpack, the world's foremost authority on beer. I'm Glenn Mack. Now, we're at the Ship Bottom Beer Garden in Beach Haven. Beautiful night. Last show of the season. We've had a really fun season. What are you drinking? This is the Mermaid Blonde. It's getting, you know, warm season. I love lighter beers in the yeah, summer. This yeah. is a good one. I like IPAs all year. Yeah, this I is know. the Swell Dorado IPA. I'm living it up. And I like, I really do enjoy the beers here at Ship Bottom, and that got us as we've been to, you said, 15, I think maybe even more maybe. places during yeah. the year. We've tried dozens and dozens of beer. We put in our work for you. Um, we drank so much that we had to send Ava out to get us more. Yes. <laughs> we moved into hard liquor. Yes. Thank you, Ava. By the way, <laughs> want to also thank our friends at Monco Makers helping us out through the year. We went to some terrific Montgomery County breweries. Uh, check them out, their website, and uh, download the app Monco Makers. We want to talk about our favorite beers of the year that from places we've been to, what do you got? All right, so favorite and best are two different things in my mind. Okay. If you ask me for the best beer that I drank this this season, I'm going to just say the Double Bock from uh, work, Workhorse. Ah, I just thought it was an amazingly okay. good beer. But I know I've been tiresome about Bock, so it's not necessarily uh, what I wanted to share with you today, Glenn. Instead, this is from... The folks at Odd Logic up in Bucks County. Yeah, sure. This was an unusual beer. I don't think we got to taste this during the actual show that we filmed up there. This is Street Corner Hustle, as in the Pretzel Man. The pretzel on the beer. Street. That's right. It's the right. Pretzel beer. So it's their salted pretzel coffee brown ale, and I like this a lot because it surprised me. This was not an over-the-top, big, uh, sugary, sweet beer, or uh, there was a lot of great aroma in this beer from the uh, the nuts, but it was. I just saw it really well made. I'm going to take that one because it's got a little head there. And you tell me what you think of this one, Glenn. Okay. Big aroma. Big aroma, coffee-ish to me, more than anything. Yeah, a little bit. Right? But to me, the very flavor... Very strong, very um, kind of bready in, in, yeah. in, a, in a way, yeah. which I guess is the pretzels they're going for, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. it was different, uh, and I think that's what made it my favorite. Okay. I like... I, I got a few here. Listen, selfishly, I brought one of the own. I'm one of the owners of Conchock and Brewing Company. I will disclose that, but I got to tell you, the MC5 at Conchi Brewing is one of my always go-tos. I love this beer. Uh, it's, it's, I got to admit, it's almost always in my basement uh, fridge, too. Uh, it's a really well-made beer. Uh, it's when I want a little when I want an IPA that's strong. That's mm -hmm. the one I'm going to drink. So okay, I got I got the Free Will. I, I mean, I got a theme here because you know what I like, <laughs> and I like the hazy beers. This is the Free Will, cloudy with a chance of charcuterie, New England style IPA with oats and milk sugar. Makes it a little bit different. And uh, like you, I brought one from our friends at Workhorse. This is their hazy apricot IPA, which so, I will 
So another IPA from, we talked about their IPA last week too, workhorse making, uh, spreading out beyond the lagers. Yeah, very, yeah, and then lagers especially, but they, I thought they did this very well. And I think it's got, I like it because it's got some apricot, but it doesn't really take over. You know, exactly. it's, it's subtle in there. That's, that's sort of the reason why I, I like the, uh, the brown ale here. It's, it had those flavors, but it didn't blow it out. Okay, we did try a lot of beers. We got to a lot of places. And let's kind of review the last year in beer locally. We were really scared going into the pandemic or in the midst of it, how that was going to play out. I get a sense from you things were a little better than we hoped. Right, but we actually, we, feared. we paused the show yes, because, we did. Of, because of the pandemic and we couldn't get into places. And uh, we really are grateful for everybody that opened up outdoor seating for us uh, during the season. But the thing that amazes me is that when we went into this and we were doing some web only uh, shows yep. as well, and we were really worried that places were going to be closing left and right. And in fact, a few places closed, uh, notably Full Pint out in uh, out by Pittsburgh had closed. But now that things are opening up, the word has just come out that they're going to reopen. Good. So, uh, good. you know, I'm not sure if it's the same owners or what, but the, it's good news that somebody uh, that thought they're out of business is coming I back. I think people really hung in and I think that People got creative with takeout, with delivery, with all kinds of ways, and I think beer drinkers are loyal. You know, they wanted they wanted the places to make it. Yeah, that's that's not that's not kid ourselves. A lot of people lost jobs, yeah. uh, especially servers and yeah. bartenders and so yeah. on. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I imagine it's going to take a while for these restaurants and bars to get back up to full strength. So go out and drink. Do your part to support the beer economy. All right. Right. As part of the beer economy, Beer Week's coming back. Couple places. Yeah. Uh, yes. The Lehigh Valley. Beer Week is coming May 15th to 22nd. It seems to be a little scaled back. Uh, this is up in the Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton Sea area. I'm not sure how many big events they're going to have. People are very, you know, touchy about yeah, sure. large groups. But uh, this is a good opportunity if you're up that way to, to taste some of the fine beers from the likes of Two Rivers Brewing, uh, High Jinx, McCall Collective, a brand new one that we've not had a chance to get yet. Uh, so that's a good opportunity up there. And there are rumblings that Philly Beer Week is coming back in some form. Uh, it's scheduled for June 4th. Uh, so far, their website has no information about what that involves. So I'm hopeful that something can come out in that Philly. Would be nice. Would be would be delighted to see it. And again, uh, we appreciate the support that we've gotten from all the places that we've gone to, and we appreciate that people are getting out there. And I, I'm optimistic about the future. I really am. I am too. Got new breweries coming along as yep. well. So uh, things are are starting to look good. Good. When we get back, this is the co-star of an HBO series. Really? Go six back, Glenn Mack now. What's brewing? It's time for spring seasonal beers and the easy drinking favorites at Concha Hocken Brewing Company. There's something for everyone, whether it's the Blood Money Blood Orange IPA, the crushable Ring the Bell Unfiltered Pilsner, Life Coach Session IPA, or my favorite, MC5, a hazy hop bomb bursting with juicy flavor and aroma. Look for these and more at your favorite local beer retailer or visit any Conshohocken Brewing Company location where you'll find safe, comfortable indoor and outdoor seating. I'll see you there. Welcome back to What's Brewing. He's Joe Sixpack. Follow him on Twitter at beer underscore radar. Follow me at Real Glenn Mac. Now the show, of course, at What's Brewing PA. I want to thank our friends at Visit Philly for their support all season long. One of the things they sponsored was our brew down that we did, which was a lot of fun. And the winner was Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. Looking forward to the next season. We got to come up with a good idea. Maybe our viewers can give us some ideas for uh, a bracket. Yeah, we always love to hear from you on social media. Okay, we did a segment a couple weeks back on how TV shows use fake beer. Uh, and there's a, a beer called Heisler Beer that you'll see on dozens of TV shows, doesn't really exist. Yeah, they designed an entire label for yeah. it. So, But some actually are using the real thing. And there's a show on HBO that I'm watching called Mayor of East Town, set in Delco, trying to be very authentic. So it's got, it's got Wawa stuff all over it. People are wearing Eagles hoodies. They go to Coco's Cheese Steaks out there. Um, hard drinking cops drinking Rolling Rock. And so I ask you, Joe Sixpack, would a hard drinking cop in Delco drink Rolling Rock? Uh, no, absolutely not. No. Uh, not anymore. Uh, there are also a lot of appearances in the show by Yingling, 
including the Chesterfield Ale, which impressed me. Ah, that's authentic beer, I okay. would say, yeah. When I first moved to PA in 1986, um, Rolling Arc was, was a very common beer. It was all over the place. I don't see it anymore. No, it was extremely popular out of Latrobe. It was a small brewery, independent for, you know, after 1933, I guess it was. Uh, and it, it, it came and went. It had great marketing. But it was a trendy even in New York City for a while. But then it got sold first to the Labatt's and, you know, came and went there. Okay. But the death knell was when it was sold to Anheuser-Busch. I think it was in 2006. And they, so they just neglected it and let it kind well, of wither? Not only neglected, they closed the brewery in Latrobe, which was a sin. I mean, oh, they put yeah. a lot of people out of work, and they moved it beer uh, brewing up to uh, Newark, New Jersey. So, okay. Well, that's not good. No. Uh, and obviously, it is not doing well. Um, I have to tell you, I used to drink it as kind of, it, it was never a great beer, but it was always a nice, no, you know, I, decent beer. It was, you Ooh, know. that's pretty clear. Yeah. That's it pretty it always just here. reminded me. Actually, the thing I always remember about this beer was it was very gassy. I remember it had. It you used, were the beer. <laughs> it made me gassy. It was very, car uh, seemed over carbonated. Uh -huh. uh, I liked it. Uh, I especially liked it in those little pony bottles. They yeah, were fun the to drink. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you think they've changed the way they make it? Uh, I, th I think it's just been dumbed down further, but you know, that's not a big surprise coming from Anheuser-Busch that they would do that. So the thing is, I think they've just neglected this brand. Yeah, there's nothing to this. There's nothing to this. No, it's a little sweet actually. Sweeter than Budweiser. But yeah, but it's got yeah. nothing going on. No, no. Um, did they change the way they made it? Didn't it used to, it used to have yeah. the, the glass line tanks yeah, it was or funny. something, they were, right? That was now, the thing? I'm not sure if this is the original one, but they have they put on the, the, the labels now. It had that great saying. Oh, uh, 33. Right, the 33, which yeah, was always a mystery. Yeah, what does that mean? words. But the, lot, the quote uh, here now is to honor the tradition of this great oh, brand. No, which, all, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's okay. all you need to know. We quote from the original Pledge of Quality. From the glass lined tanks of old Latrobe, we tender this premium beer for your enjoyment as a tribute to your your good taste. It comes from the mountain springs to you. None of which is true tonight. Not anymore. No. Not glass no. line, not mountain springs. Uh, unless we're talking about uh, no. the uh, East River or something. <laughs> so. Of New Jersey, of Newark. Okay. Uh, but I do like the fact that, again, it's not local, but I, I like that Mayor of Easttown is doing kind of all those tributes. And so we talked about yeah. uh, what beer worked for what TV shows and movies. And you found a thing about Rocky. Yeah, exactly. This was an issue uh, at one point, too, because uh, I think it was when uh, Rocky Balboa, which was which remake? Number six. Six, OK. Sylvester Stallone did a, one of those Ask Me Anythings, and somebody asked him, who, what beer does Rocky drink? And his first line, reply was Rolling Rock. And I think he was playing off a of rock. Oh, you rock. Know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. that was completely wrong because the filmmakers knew that Rolling Rock was not the right beer for Rocky of, of you know, Philadelphia to be drinking. Yeah. There's the scene in the movie, early in the first movie, where he's in the bar drinking beer, the cracked mirror in the men's room. Right. And he's drinking... Schmitz. Schmitz. Schmitz, of course. That works. Right. Of course, Schmitz isn't around anymore, so that would not make a, an authentic beer for uh, Mayor of Easttown. But uh, nonetheless... And that's what Rocky actually did drink back in the original. The point is, is that a beer, the, type, the brand of beer actually does say a lot about the character. If they drink the wrong beer, they may blow the character. And I love that you got angry that a movie I really like, History of Violence, Violence with yeah. Viggo Mortensen, yeah, right? Yeah, a great actor. Exactly. Yeah, and it's a good movie. And you got upset about the beer he's drinking. Yeah, the funny thing is that the beer is actually decorated with Schmitz and Yingling signs, but what does he order? A Genesee cream ale, which is really hard to find in Philly. Yeah, so. yeah. although a beer I like. It well, is. There you go. All right, coming up, uh, we're going to tell you a great story. We're going to go back 120 years to tell you a great story when the water was so bad in Philadelphia that they needed to build breweries just for public safety. That is a true story. <laughs> We're at the Ship Bottom Brewing Company Beer Garden in Beach Haven, Long Beach Island. Beautiful night for what's brewing. It's a place that inspires the dreamers, the overachievers, a place for those who follow the path, as well as the ones who blaze them. So whether you want to go with the flow or rise above it all, visit Bucks County and be inspired.
Brewing Beer Brewdown is sponsored by the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, 90-plus breweries, and 1,000-plus beers. Vote for your choices on Twitter at beer underscore radar, Real Glenn Mac now, or What's Brewing PA. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing with the Ship Bottom Brewing Company, Beer Garden Beach Haven. It's our last show of the year, our fourth season. We really had a lot of fun. Look forward to seeing you again in the fall. We want to thank some of our sponsors. One great one all season long was the Bucks County Ale Trail. We, we did go to a lot of places in Bucks County this year. We did. Uh, you know, I mentioned the Odd Logic, uh, but yeah, they, they're really a good, vibrant beer scene there. Uh, really exciting. Yeah, and if you download their uh, app uh, and go to their breweries, you can win various prizes. It's a lot of fun, and you have a great time. Okay, let's go back in the day. <laughs> 1901. Way back. Yeah. Well, listen, you know Philadelphia's history as well as anybody I know. You constantly impressed me. <laughs> Found this story back in the old Philadelphia Bulletin. Didn't, what, your father delivered the Bulletin? Or uh, I delivered the Bulletin. My father uh, delivered one of the other uh, papers. Okay. Yeah. Some defunct papers. Yes, exactly. Another one. They're all defunct. <laughs> this is a great story from back in the day. It has never been easy to get a liquor license in this, er, this commonwealth, correct? Uh, here's somebody's strategy from 1901. This is a story where essentially an applicant for a liquor license in West Philly argued that he needed one because the water was so undrinkable in those parts that the public needed to drink booze as a substitute just to survive. Let me read this to you. And by the way, they don't write it like this anymore. No. Your Honor, he told Judge Pennypacker, oh, the name. people have to drink something and the water is so vile that they can't drink that without being able to digest a comb bank every week. <laughs> I didn't know what a comb bank was. It was a, it's a, it's a, it's coal mine waste or a spoil heap. It's a, it's a slag heap. Yeah, the, 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 from the coal region in, in Pennsylvania, the coal used to be washed and the water would come down uh, the Schuylkill and they would build these uh, areas off to the side to collect the, uh, the, the coal dust. was that dirty? Oh, my word, it was horrible. It was horrible. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, a similar plea was made by another applicant who asservated, not a word I've used in my, <laughs> any of my writing, that so great was the rush of men to saloon nights uh, that when the school was at its force, it was necessary to wait 15 minutes before a drink could be served. Oh, geez. So basically, they argued, they said, this may sound funny, but citizens without filters cannot protect themselves. The water is so bad that they need to drink beer. Your thoughts, Joe Sixpack? Uh, you know, beer is healthy stuff. I mean, it's, it's a great alternative to dirty water, but, you know, that's something we've had all our history. You know, alcohol was, the, you know, the, the option to drink uh, because water all around the world was, was poisonous, basically. So drink, drink beer. One of the things you told me this year that really stuck with me, and I don't remember what show it came up in, is that they gave out beer in school to kids? Where in was Belgium, it? In yes. Bel they used to serve about? it at, uh, at, at lunchtime to uh, children. It was a 2.5% alcohol beer. But, you know, the thing there was that it was healthier than having uh, serving soda. So drink beer instead. Well, that might be true. Uh, just the rest of this story, this is from the Bull in 1901. It is not to be wondered that as between buying water by the glass or pail and buying beer in the same measure, many of the people of this town prefer the beer and that every time there is a heavy rain on the Schuylkill, the cause of temperance or total abstinence in this city falls into ghastly decline. Yeah, abstinence people wanted people to drink less, but they didn't have a good alternative, and that's why they started building fountains around the yeah, city. Yeah, you tell me. Tell to, me about the fountains. So the Swan Fountain at Logan Square in, in Center City was built for that very purpose. It was a alternate source. But frankly, my favorite of all these fountains that were built, and there was very many of them around, was in uh, 1874 it was built in Fairmount Park the Catholic Total Abstinence Union Fountain. It's still there. It's in front of the Mann Center. The last time I looked, it was a bit overgrown with weeds. It was not functioning, but it's a really wild fountain with uh, statues of Moses and Commodore Barry and like, this whole variety of temperance figures. And it was there to get people to drink that water instead of like sidling on down the hill to the Brewer's Pavilion at the Centennial. Okay, all right. So what's the lesson here? 
Well, we got good clean water now, but I do think that beer is your is your healthy option. There you go. <laughs> beer is your healthy option. I don't think I'm going to argue that whatsoever. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now it's a beautiful night down at the shore. We're at the Ship Bottom Brewing Company uh, Beer Garden, Long Beach Island. What's brewing? They're not just familiar faces. They're your friends and neighbors. It's their small businesses, a beating heart that makes a neighborhood a home, where personality is served on a plate and imagination paints a brighter world. A place where fresh is always in stock with a personal touch passed down through generations. Support small and make a big difference. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Monco. The Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia. Five counties, over 90 breweries, and over a thousand beers. Sip your way through it, one beer at a time. Welcome back to Watch Brewing, along with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now. We're at the Ship Island Brewing Company Beer Garden, Long Beach Island. It's our last show of the season. Uh, we look forward to being back in the fall, but Joe Sixpack, Here's to you, because I've really had a lot of fun with you all. Cheers. Here. It's Cheers. been uh, great Cheers. to, to, to uh, get back to drinking with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. And we do appreciate our audience, uh, everybody at NBC Sports Philadelphia. Um, and we thank you for keeping us on the air. Our wives appreciate it. Uh, okay. <laughs> we are joined here by Chris Yazensack, who is a rep for this fine company, and Frank Campo -Bas Basso, head brewer. Easy for you to say. Uh, let's start with the brewer. Because you guys are always doing all kinds of creative stuff. What's next? What's on the docket? We got a few things. Um, we just released a uh, our first proper kettle sour, which I feel like came out phenomenally. Um, everyone's been really liking that. Super fruity and juicy, very tart and sour. Um, and then we have our, our normal summer releases we got coming up, which are our pie series. We do yeah. a peach. Peach Cobbler Ale, which everyone loves, uh, Key Lime, uh, Key Lime Sour, and uh, a Banana Cream Ale also. Ooh. And then we also have our uh, Shark Week we always do since we're down at the beach. Uh, we try to do some fun stuff for that. We did a bucket of chum, which uh, <laughs> that's right. I remember is, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a Hefeweizen yeah, 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 with, yeah. Uh, with a lot of Swedish fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some extra fruit in there and then people liked it so we turned it into a bigger batch and it seemed pretty popular so we're going to do that again this year. All right so Ship Bottom makes a lot of crazy beers. Uh, do you have a line that you would not go past in making beers? Um, no I don't think so <laughs> really. Like, I, had, um, I had a feeling the answer to that was no. It's so. no and yes really because it's, 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 it's got to be about the, the final product. Well um, people like these kinds of different beers. Yeah. Uh, what do you enjoy brewing? I, I enjoy um, making new things. New things. Okay. Um, our, our owner, Rob, has been very uh, great with giving me some freedom. And uh, even if it's just like IPAs, I get to play around with hops, which is fun. Has, has he ever given you an idea that you had, were scratching your head and said, I have no idea what we can do with um, this? Yeah. Our, uh, our peanut butter IPA okay. that we released a, uh, a jelly IPA and a peanut butter IPA in collaboration and uh, and the peanut butter one was scratching my head I'm not gonna <laughs> lie like the combination of an IPA uh, admittedly, peanut yeah. butter and it was one of my favorite things we've made. In I a was scratching while. my head on that. Have you one tried too. that? I have uh, and I'm still scratching my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love many of your beers. Love many of your beers. <laughs> Let's get Yaz in here because um, you guys have some interesting news kind of about distributing and what's going on with that. Yeah, um, my job is not as exciting as Frank's, but uh, we take everything that Frank makes and get it on the street. Um, I cover North Jersey, Bucks County, and Monco for the company. And um, aside from distributing uh, our own product, uh, we now have an agreement with uh, Battle River out of Tom's River. They're a great little brewery. Uh, pretty much right in the heart of downtown. Uh, I believe they started in August last year. Uh, we distribute their Warhorse New England IPA and 
their Patriot West Coast IPA. Both very good beers. Doing a thing also with Sterling Pig, right? Yes, we are. Uh, in fact, uh, we met with them this morning, and uh, I believe first, second week of May, uh, we're going to distribute them nice. in New Jersey. Good yeah. for you. Very nice. Yep. So Joe Sixpack asked uh, Frank this. I'll ask you, what do you, what do you like to drink? Uh, I like Belgian triples. That's the stay at home or go out and call Uber kind of beer. Right. I also like farmhouse style. Okay. Um, but over the years, when the sours have gotten better and better, I've gravitated to sours. I'm drinking Do Not Pass Goza. Same. Oh, yeah. I've, I've really started to enjoy sours over the past couple of years. Yep. So that's why I was happy with, with our first one that we put out recently. What's the hardest to make? Um, lagers are yeah, tricky, say, man. Lager. Yeah. And they're also my favorite. That's what I'm drinking right now is the Cerveza. Um, which is probably my favorite beer we put out just because summertime over here is amazing and this beer over here just yeah, it kicks fits. it up a notch. Yeah. Um, but our Barnegat Lager is a close second behind that. But yeah, they've been, they've been tricky to, to yeah. dial in and get mm -hmm. them just right. You're here down at the Jersey Shore. What do you think, uh, both of this question is for both of you, what's the beer culture like down here? Is it, is it is it as advanced as it might be in, a, in the city, or, or how, how, do people, how does it play out? It's all over the map, I would think. Um, it's our big business is summertime, so so we really do do well with fruited IPAs, mm -hmm. the fruited sours, Gosa, um, anything that's got a lot of flavor to it. Um, seems to do pretty well over here in the summertime. What's your experience, Ron? I mean, it, it, you, you think of light beer down the shore so often. Is it tough to get past that? Not necessarily. Uh, once you start moving inland, there's a, a whole different attitude mm -hmm. of wanting to try a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Um, and it, in typical fashion, our best seller is the Shack, number two is the Hop and Hazy, and the Lager in the last year has turned into a very, very strong, strong number three for us. It's good to know. Um, and when you go to Beer Fest, you start to encounter a lot of very well-educated people who know their hops, they know their beer, they know sure. their grains. And there's people who travel all over just to try different beers, and it's a, it's a pretty well-educated market. I just want to wrap by saying, I know you don't make this one year-round, but one of my, this is one of my five favorite beers right. in the world, this Mexican stout that you guys make. Uh, so please make it, sell it, bring it to me. It's been, it's been getting it. made more and more yeah. as the years go on. Good. So uh, summer batch for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll drink it we in the summer. We do occasionally do a summer batch. I that. will drink yeah, it in the know. summer. Frank and Yes, thanks so much for Thank you joining us and thanks for hosting us. Joe Sixpack, uh, I think I speak for both of us. It's been a great season. We look forward to seeing everybody in the fall. Uh, you can catch us in reruns. You can always find us on YouTube. And thanks for being part of it this year. I'm going to hold up the whole, this is what I got, <laughs> on What's Brewing. Cheers. 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 What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County. We are open. Travel responsibly. Follow the Bucks County Ale Trail. Go to visitbuckscounty.com slash ale trail to get your passport. By the Craft Beer Trail of Greater Philadelphia, five counties, 90 plus breweries, and 1,000 plus beers. And by Concha Hocking Brewing Company, now shipping beer to all of Pennsylvania at conchiexpress.com.